Sun Xing Dui. A huge multi-million treasure disappeared without a trace. Two almost impossible fascinating world records. A huge amount of willfully destroyed ancient and unique works of art. High-tech made in China and aliens too? What these exciting archaeological finds of the century are all about? What parallels exist to the legendary ancient Troy and legendary Atlantis? And why the Chinese now even have to rewrite their history in part unintentionally? You will find out now in Sanjing Dui. Right in the heart of China lies the Sichuan Basin with the beautiful rural area of Sanjing Dui. There is also a large hall that covers all excavations from 2020. And in the Sanjing Dui Museum, there you will find wonderful exhibits from these excavations. The area is excellent for growing rice, is idyllic, quiet and just rural. Half of China was already supplied with rice from there. Otherwise, nothing interesting was ever going on here. One thought. For over 3000 years, incredible treasures have been slumbering, lost and forgotten, just waiting to be discovered. Of course, like Murphy's Law, where the jam bread always falls on the jam side, this first discovery came at the worst possible time. Unfortunately, in 1929, in troubled China with civil war and a Soviet-Chinese border war, a farmer digging for a new well found a large number of jade relics. Apparently, the farmer's farm sales went extremely well, and so instead of archaeologists, hordes of private collectors rushed to the rich loot of the millennia-old jade pieces, and not much was left to examine. And the poor archaeologists were even more unlucky. Once again applying Murphy's Law, they combed the square kilometer area for more treasure for the next 57 years in vain and found nothing. Finally, in 1986, workers during earthworks found by chance the first sacrificial pit, a real treasure trove, bursting with gold, bronze, jade and ceramic artifacts that had been broken, burned and carefully buried. Just a month later, just a few meters away, the second sacrificial pit was found, filled with another 800 objects, including a large quantity of ivory and conch shells, tables, masks, belts of gold, axes, tablets, rings, knives and tubes of jade, still more pottery, and above all fantastic bronze treasures such as sculptures of human and animal faces, bells, ornamental animals such as dragons, snakes, birds, chicks and axes. And this time, unlike in 1929, it was finally the turn of the archaeologists. The two sites were quickly identified as sacrificial pits for religious sacrificial ceremonies. Material goods were there ritually destroyed and burned and offered to the gods to ask favors of them. Due to the intentional thorough destruction of the artifacts, legions of archaeologists have been busy restoring and solving this gigantic puzzle for years now. The researchers were amazed at the incredible thrown away riches at such an early age and also very surprised to find an artistic style previously unknown in the history of Chinese art. Previously, Chinese science was convinced that the cradle of Chinese civilization lay solely in the Yellow River Valleys. Not entirely correct. Sanjing Dui now changes the entire chapter of early Chinese history, rewriting an essential part of history. This makes it, at least for the Chinese, a far more important find than the Terracotta Army in Xi'an. The pottery army of the first Chinese emperor was created much later, in example only about 2250 years ago. But Sanjing Dui offers finds from about 4100 years ago to about 3000 years ago, and thus enables fascinating new insights into early history. The mussel shells came from the Indian Ocean and were used as money and trade currency there at that time. This testifies to the far 
far-reaching trade relations of this civilization. In the meantime, it's also known that the city center with the religious complexes is spread over 3.6 square kilometers because a total of almost 8 kilometers of city wall has been found together with some other ruins. The fortification of the city alone with 8 to 10 meters high city walls up to 40 meters wide at the base which was also surrounded by a 2 to 3 meters deep and at least 20 meters wide city moat full of water is still a huge construction project by today's standards. Certainly no city would want to finance. And these people just did it that way. Maybe just because they could. Respect. And amazingly, the constant flow of new discoveries doesn't stop at all. From 2020 to 2022 alone, six more sacrificial pits were discovered and more than 13,000 finds have now been recovered. Among them are remains of silk, individual Chinese characters and other fascinating works of art made by bronze. Yes, the bronze objects are really very impressive, artistic as well as technological masterpieces of this long gone period. The standing statue probably represents a high priest and is incredibly 2 meters 60 tall, including the pedestal. That's a world record. The largest Bronze Age standing statue found so far, cast in bronze. However, it has to be said that the competition at this time is still keeping a low profile, mostly under meters of earth, and it will be interesting to see whether this world record will be broken at some point. Another world record is the incredible height of this bronze tree of 3 meters 96. Only by adding plenty of lead could the bronze alloy achieve a degree of hardness that would allow the filigree tree not to collapse under its own weight. Such metallurgy was absolutely high-tech at that time. Interestingly, two other large trees are still waiting to be assembled because they too are only available in puzzle form and it takes years to restore and reconstruct them. And then there is the largest bronze mask ever unearthed in the world. Measuring 1 meter 31 wide, 71 centimeters high and weighing 65 kilograms. World record again. The wearer must have been a really big head. <laughs> All in all, the finds so far are not only a priceless treasure worth billions of dollars, but also gave fascinating insights into life in the distant past. This find of the century has rewritten Chinese history, enriching our knowledge of the complexity of human civilizations of even thousands of years ago. The excavations continue so far not even 2% of the area have been explored. And I'm curious what else will be discovered in the coming years. No one knows where this highly developed civilization suddenly appeared from. Because of the abstract art of the masks, some rumored to be prehistoric aliens who had nothing better to do than travel tens of billions of kilometers in flying saucers to teach our ancestors how to work metals. Others attribute San Jingdui civilization to the ancient and virtually undocumented Gu Shu state in China. There are indications of this, but still nowhere near proof. There is still no definitive explanation for the sudden disappearance of the San Jingdui civilization around 3150 years ago. A documented violent earthquake at that time with large landslides and as a cause of their disappearance is suspected, or probably armed conflicts with neighbors or from within. There are also hints, but no real evidence, that they may have merged into the Shu state that arose at that time. Well, I could go on for hours. I'm so fascinated by the topic, but I, and I'm sure you too, are probably already overwhelmed by all the information. That's why I'm going to take you on a short walk to beautiful San Jingdui and then tell you the fascinating similarities between San Jingdui and ancient Troy, yes, the one with the hollow horse, and even Atlantis. Hold on, it's worth it. San Jingdui!
in San Jingjui. Everywhere there's history in the ground. Wow. I find something. Wow. Oh. <laughs> <You know? laughs> just a joke, just a joke. I'll tell you right away where I actually found this golden mask. But first, as promised, the parallels of San Jingdui with Troy and Atlantis. The Greek poet Homer is said to have written the Iliad and the Odyssey. It is not known whether he actually existed and whether he lived about 2800 or even 3200 years ago. All in all, a very questionable historical source and his works simply read more like epic fairy tales than documented history. So no one really believed in the existence of Troy, which was allegedly ultimately brought down in the Trojan War by the ruse of the Trojan horse. And the subsequent Odyssey of Odysseus, where he met all the mythical creatures and had to deal with gods, doesn't sound very convincing either. And yet, the historic city of Troy was apparently actually discovered by Heinrich Schliemann in 1871. Same in China. A millennia-old book called Shan Hai Jing, whose author was completely unknown, is the oldest surviving book of Chinese mythology. Also full of mythical creatures, outrageously strange stories and apparently fictitious places. And yet the book describes in detail the three bronze trees found in San Jingdui. Their names are Fu Sang, Qian Mu and Ruo Mu. The book is about the beautiful story that the tree Fu Sang, the tree of life in the east, from which the sun rises every day and in the west it sinks into the tree Ruo Mu to rest. Chinese legends tell of ten birds, typically ravens, residing in the tree. And while nine are dormant, the tenth would carry the sun on its journey. Finally, in Chinese legend, Tian Mu is a tree that served as a ladder when the gods ascended to heaven. And indeed, all three trees appear in San Jingdui. The book also writes about a very first king of the Gushu state, Zanzong. He is the founder of silkworm farming and is said to have reigned for hundreds of years, has been around Chengdu area where San Jingdui is also located and is quite aptly described with bulging eyes. This is what he is said to have looked like and was incredibly revered at the time. San Jingdui and Troy were both mentioned in ancient fantastical books and initially relegated to the realms of legend until both were actually found and their existence proved. Now only Atlantis is missing as described by the Greek philosopher Plato. If someone could please discover this, thank you. Of course I'm not a grave robber. The small golden mask which I showed to you is a replica, a copy, a fake, a toy. You can buy it for small money on Taobao, the Chinese version of eBay. And you even need to simulate the unearthing of your piece of treasure to get your hands on it. It's really fun. Something to eat. Incredibly fascinating. There is still so much to tell and new discoveries are constantly being made and new insights gained. So it remains exciting. Maybe it was extraterrestrials who created these masterpieces there. Wink, wink. <laughs> but most likely those people were also without the help of aliens and flying saucers able to develop such a fantastic civilization on their own. The people of the past were not less intelligent, religious or lacking cultural values. Possibly they had great conditions for wealth and peace due to an ex excellent location at international trade routes by military or diplomatic strength, which made a rich culture scene and advanced religious life possible. Or San Jingdui simply profited from even older rich technological knowledge of still undiscovered neighbors or predecessors. But this is mere speculation now. Feel free to write in the comments on which topics related to China you would like to have more videos. Thank you for watching. Over and out. Zai Jian. Your Lauma.